Joining us now is candidate for the 12th City Council District, Andy King, incumbent City Council member, Andy King. Welcome, sir. My pleasure, Javier. Glad to be here. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I had never had the chance to interview you. Well, thank you. I love this here. Oh, you like my beer great. Thank you. I love yours. like it, too. I know they had a bit of an issue with it a couple of years ago. Now, uh, Council Member, as we approach the uh, end of your, or the completion of your first term at the City Council and there's a new election, mm -hmm. you're up for re-election. Um, what would you say are some of the challenges that are still being faced around the district? Well, you know, challenges are always going to be prevalent in life, period. And as an elected leader, you know, you, you accomplish some things and you have some things left on the table, but it still doesn't negate the good work that we've all been doing in the city council. So when you talk about some of the issues that we still have in the neighborhood, I would say one of the things that we need to continue to improve on is safety. Um, when it comes to safety, I know I've done a lot of good work with the NYPD and my staff has done a lot of work with the NYPD. They're making sure that the officers are well taken care of so they can deliver quality services in the neighborhood. Recently just allocated $1 million to the 4th, 7th precinct to make sure that those officers, when they walk into their precincts now, they feel good about the work in the places that they're working. So when they come into the neighborhood, they treat the neighborhood with the respect. Because we've had issues with NYPD over a period of time, but we've been working to change that and we're going to continue to work with our men and women in blue to continue to protect and serve to be one great community. I think another thing that we've been working on, and it goes into transportation, but more as well as safety, White Plains Road area has been a real challenge when it comes to our business corridor, one of our major business corridors. So since um, being in office, I've been able to establish an Operation Cleaner Streets that will take partner up with our neighbors and our friends in the 12th District, and we will go out and clean and help sanitation clean up White Plains Road. Um, I've allocated over $300,000, and this year we've allocated thousands more to make sure that we have additional pickups on White Plains Road alone because it's a heavy traffic area. And as much as we want to keep it clean, yeah, humans are humans. So sometimes on a Saturday evening you might have an overflow of traffic. But for the, for the norm, it's not our reality, it's just a situation that occurs because people are out. But we're doing a lot of work to improve the White Plains core area, area and as well as it's been very dark and dingy on White Plains Road because it's under the L. So mm. I'm grateful that I've been working with the Department of Transportation and we've just put new LED lighting. You know, like when you go to 42nd Street at 9 o'clock at night, Correct. it looks like it's 3 o'clock. Well, that's the lighting that we've just placed on Gun from Gun Hill, from Burke Avenue mm -hmm. to 233rd to improve, to make people feel good and lively about themselves. So, you know, safety always becomes a good uh, issue. And even when it comes to jobs and, you know, allowing people to have uh, economic stability. When you are economically stable, you tend not to do some stupid things in the street. You're busy <laughs> doing something else, right? Yeah. So um, I, I am grateful, you know, that we've tried to help people with employment opportunities. But that all goes back to education because I always say to people, we can offer you a job, but are you qualified to handle the job? You know, so we have to help people understand that Education goes far beyond the third grade, and when you're 16, you know, you got to make a, continue to make a real commitment to educate yourself, and if you're not looking to get a BA or AA or a doctor's, that's fine, but be a quality person. To me, a quality person means you educate yourself, so when you're 22, 25, or 30, you're still able to provide yourself, provide for yourself and, and on your family. You know, our world today is transitioning into green spaces and technology, so Learn technology. Learn it. You know, it's not like it's not offered. We offer it in the 12th district. You know, at the libraries, as the chair of the library system, we've put um, quality money, you know, historic money, actually $40 million to make sure that our libraries are open seven days a week. So if you want to learn computers, there are computer services in the libraries, in the senior centers, all the funding, that historic funding I put in our senior centers, an um, organization called OAT that does mm -hmm. computer training for our seniors. But we can take it all the way back to the educational system, the DOE, you know, I've, I've put in $12 million since I've been in office for technology, gym upgrades, auditorium, classrooms, programs to make sure that our children have access to quality education. How do you feel overall about the Department of Education in general recently? I think the Department of Education, you know, on a, you know, sometimes I, I call the Department of Education <laughs> organized chaos because sometimes they're always <laughs> trying to figure it out. But I say at the end of the day, if we in, in government can give assistance and if the educators in there are truly committed, then our kids will learn.
but you got to make sure you have educators that are in the classroom who are part of the neighborhood and I've offered to the UFT and I've offered to the City Council maybe we should have some type of residency plan that it requires at least 60 to 70 percent of your staff at a, at a school building is from the neighborhood so they connect to what's going on in the community so when they're not looking to rush out of a neighborhood you know at four o'clock because they got to get back home to their children mm -hmm. to live somewhere else but I think what I have been able to partner with with the chancellor to have the communication with the chancellor regularly, have communications with my principals regularly, have communications with my teachers regularly to figure out how do I offer my assistance, whether it's financially or just legislatively, to do what we can to educate our children in the 12. What do you think about this issue of mayoral control, the, the, the department? <laughs> mayoral control is kind of tricky. You know why? Because if you're going to give the mayor control, give them control. I, uh, control, I, I, that's in control. Yeah, just give, yeah, just give them control, and yeah, and if everything falls apart, then it falls on the mayor. You know, we can't don't go to Albany fighting about for Albany. You know, Albany, if you're going to give it to him and let him run the system, so if the system messes up, then we have one place to go to. But we can't go be going back and forth. So. If we're going to have mayoral control, let's do it in, in, in real mayoral control. Another biggie in the district is housing mm -hmm. uh, in terms of home ownership, but also there's a lot of renters yes. in the neighborhood. So what, what's your vision for the next four years? Well, what people don't understand or may not know, the 12th district is a homeowner's district. Oh, really? I grew up in a home, uh, a house. Um, we have five NYCHA developments in the 12th district and very limited tenanted buildings. But for the most part, we have over 14,000 homes in the 12th district. So I have been managing and working with homeowners to keep people in their homes, whatever problems they may have with taxes and sewer and tax liens, making sure that we keep people in their homes because we want we do not want to change the look of the 12th district. So in addition to having a home ownership, we have, you say we do have some renters and we want to make sure that I have a lot of friends actually from Manhattan yeah. and because of affordability, they're relocating to your district specifically. Yeah. Well, we're a working district. And, and the district is a good district. And I don't, I don't subscribe because you have one or two or three incidents that might occur that that's our everyday norm. There are some districts, there are some parts of New York City that are really struggling, that are really bad. We may have our challenges in the 12, but we're a really good district. You know, we have, we have good businesses, regardless of whatever vacant spaces that we have. We have really good business. We have the only indoor mall in the burial of the Bronx. You know, we're a homeowner district. We have people who are working, professionals up there. So I am proud of the, of the 12th district, regardless of any challenges. I've, I've lived there my entire life. I've gone through the public school system. I'm a proud graduate of PS41, Olin Virginia High School, and the Evander Charles High School. So this is home for me. So I take everything personal. So you know, I give my blood, sweat, and tears for my community. In terms of <laughs> home ownership and preservation, what are some solutions to make sure that people are able to retain their home? Well, we've been offering tax liens. We've partnered mm -hmm. with a number of banks in the community to make sure that we have our little workshops to tell people how they can stay in their homes, as well as being able to manage any challenges that they have in starting up a home. Next week, you know, in lieu of some of the affordable housing crisis, like I said, I promote home ownership as just a renter who comes in at the end of the day, has no connection to a neighbor, and never looks to put, put, um, put down roots. So I've allocated $2.8 million to Humanity for Habitat, and we get ready to build for the, for the groundbreaking that's going to happen in October, the largest affordable home ownership that's going to take place right in the 12th district. And next week, we're doing the... Uh, uh, presentation and we're going to do a groundbreaking in October and that's my commitment to making sure that home ownership stands and people have a place to live in the What's district. your platform in terms of uh, small businesses? Well small business and development. Know, we, we talk about small business because they are really like the meat and potatoes of our communities and in the, our corridors whether it's Boston Road or you're in any of the co-op city areas or you are running along Gun Hill Road. Some of to the White main Place in Road. the entire region. Yeah. Well one of the things that I've done is in, in is support our small businesses and having a conversation with the business owners to be a part of the neighborhood as well so we can co constantly come out and deliver funding to you. Not only just deliver funding, but the residents can spend their money. So I'm proud that working with the March Bashulu um, Development Corporation that we started a, um, a merchants association for the White Plains Corridor to get our business people more involved in our neighborhood, let people know what you're doing, and then we adver advertise the whole corridor so we can promote more business. And in all the vacant locations that we have, we'll be looking for the landlords to make sure that they put businesses in there that helps our neighborhood. Healthcare accessibility is also another issue. What are your thoughts on that? You know, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything else. You know, so I've been an advocate long before I became to the city council as an organizer for 1199 SEIU, the healthcare um, union. So my goal is 
making sure people have access to our partner with Metro Plus, Health, Health First, as well as a host of others to infinity to host uh, to have a number of uh, access to health care, registering people for health care. You know, I understand it, and, and I end with this. You know, when it comes to healthy living, people need to understand health, health, health and wellness doesn't revolve around having health care. It's the foods that you eat, the activities you engage in that keep you healthy. So I'm proud that we're going to be building one of the first of its kind supermarkets on Gunner Road that has a federal mandate to provide healthy food and displays that has a whole paradigm shift of how food is delivered in the 12th district. Before we go, uh, you spoke a little bit about policing. Um, anything you can say about uh, police and community relations? I think we have improved tremendously. Just this week, the 47th Precinct held this back to school backpack giveaway. Over about 5,000 12th District residents showed it. It was a wonderful time. We have changed as a paradigm shift of how NYPD and community interacts in the 12th District. We're all coming together, and that's part of, as I say, bringing unity back to the community when I first ran in 2009. And we're, we're, we are successful in completing that task. Thank you, Mr. King, and good luck in the primary. Thank you. <laughs> we have to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We'll be right back.